back with Hardline. Back in the base of the cult. Remember, Catherine was kidnapped by them. And we're, uh, things are hot and heavy right now. Learning about our past where we had brain surgery. Sort of. I mean, we're not learning really many details. Just kind of, you know, very broad strokes about what's happened to us. Look, it doesn't matter. We will learn everything there is that we need to learn as we continue on in Hardline. Yeah. Don't even need to use your fingers for that. What an incredible use of power. Man, all the all these like fragments of flashbacks. How long will it take before you can remember the whole thing? It's only it's a matter of time. Use your mind to turn that on. One day, they went for a drive. Just a happy family. No, we can't know yet. We can't know yet what happened. It's too good. How, how does the computer know us? How could our computer possibly... How could the computer possibly know which... Uh, the... Mystery! The mystery! The medical checkup from 1998. Historical records? Car accident. Parents killed. Our brother. Fatal injuries. But what does this have to do with what's happening now? And then Ted. And the brain, the, the microchips. Replaced his damaged brain pieces. I mean, that's good, right? I mean, this is all good. This That's good. I would think. But then the re-education happened. End of file. Ted! Give up! Forget it, Lars! Forget the sect! Oh no, Ted's interfaced! <laughs> I mean, Ted makes a compelling argument. Uh, Ted, what's going on? They had you over on their side for a while. I pulled you back. You kidnapped Catherine, remember? Uh, that's right. I locked her in the sectoid base. Yeah, we gotta go get her and we have to finish ISIL. How are we gonna do that? I don't know, but we've gotta do it now. Come on, let's go. I'm probably gonna, like, blast energy out of my hands, just like I did. Seems like probably the...
Oh. Can I can I just give him the old Hadouken? Maybe I can only do that once in a while. I feel like we should be beyond guns at this point. Like, there's just a point where I don't need these primitive tools of man. I have evolved beyond them. No, it's that, but I guess that's not going to, like, actually be reflected in the gameplay. Now we can walk along. I'm, well, I'm glad we got Lars back. Oh, let me just see. What am I using right now? What is that? Oh, psychic powers. Okay, I do have a new weapon in my inventory. It is psychic powers. That's what we're using now. I don't. I don't know if the psychic powers seem as good as the uh, onslaught master, but it's what we're using at the moment. I mean, it seems like this experimental brain surgery was a rousing success. Can't get any more successful than this. You think this would have made the news? So I guess... I guess our powers also have the ability to, like, break the connection between a person and the deck. So they're no longer brainwashed, because we have Lars back on our side. So, I mean, technically, all these people we're killing, we could, like, just sever their connection from the deck with our psychic powers. Like, we could do that, but we're not. What are you waiting for? Kill him! He's weak. He must die. It's easy. You're right, Morgan. It's easy to kill. He's mine. Well, do it! Kiss my ass, Morgan. I'm gonna rip your fucking throat out. Um, you're not doing too well here, Lars. Just tell me if you want me to step in. Oh, look out, Lars! No! 
Not our sweet Lars. Sectoid base with ISIL. I locked her up myself. Over there. Behind those buildings. Block 912. It's gonna be okay. Talk to me, Lars. Get going, kid. Yellow, yell his name. Yell his name at the heavens. Ted. Yes, Lars. <laughs> Use all that metal in your head. <laughs> Never forget his last words. Yell, yell his name. Ted, you can't do anything right. Lars! As the camera pans up and soulful music. It's, it's, what, you, it's what you're supposed to do. Where are we going? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Man, Ted. That was, that was the best take, huh? Ted Irvin is not a man with emotion in his voice, I guess. Night vision in Where are we going? Do we know where we're going? May are we using our psychic powers to figure out where to go? I don't... I mean... Uh, granted, there's a lot of details we're seeing here. Okay, I guess the jet just knows where the base is. All right. Combat mode engaged. Are we fighting in the jet? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yes. Okay, so, uh, not many characters left. Catherine's still alive, she's captured. There's Isil, who is, like, the the main villain we've seen. We've not seen the actual deck itself, whatever it may be. But Lars and, what was his name, Morgan? Was that his name? They're gone. So we're at the point in the story where the characters are dropping off. And I, I, not to disrespect Lars, but if I had to go, I could, I would hope I would, could think of a better dying phrase than, Ted, use all that metal in your head. I mean, I know that, you know, maybe he didn't think of it in advance. He was shocked that this is where he was dying. Uh, I feel like he could have done better. By the way, what's actually happening right now? Is the jet like... Are we... We're on the ground and we're like... R driving it around? No.
No, okay, we're like hovering, I guess. We were just like hovering a few feet off the ground. Oh, are we ha are we fighting the helicopter? Is ISIL in there? What a high-speed chase! Shit! Uh, well, it was good while it lasted. I guess we're gonna have to go on foot. Eject immediately. Tolerance level matched in 3.9 seconds estimated. Armor integrity low. That's a, it's not the first, uh, not the first aircraft Ted has gotten blown up today. Wait, is this the guy? Is this the guy that we... Yeah, it's that guy. Who is this? <laughs> is, this is this the brother? At last. It's gotta be the brother. Long way dead. Did he also get the experimental brain surgery? You know I've come to kill you. Why throw away your life so recklessly? You cannot oppose the deck's will. We have been walking the same path all along, Ted. The deck is in all of us. Hot. Yeah. Well, it ain't in me yet. <laughs> He's got the powers! Hold on. <clears throat> should I pick psychic powers? It seems like I should probably pick psychic powers. Don't know if it matters. If I could just choose any weapon, but I mean, I figure psychic powers would be the way to go for this one. I mean, you know, the the flash stepping is impressive, but it seems like the only thing he does is, like, pick up debris from the ground and throw it at me. I feel like our powers are much more impressive. I, I guess he can do that. are 
destruction, Ted. Blind hate. You've turned into what you fought. The deck is in you. You are losing grasp. He offers humanity a glorious path. You offer frustration, weakness, and loss. Pain isn't losing. All right, not, uh, well, I guess even though his body isn't real and he's part of us, we're going to keep firing energy balls because what else can we do? Why did they like show us flashbacks in in black and white? What was was something supposed to be like revealed there? I guess. Like, you just keep screaming hard enough, eventually you're gonna win. Kate! Yeah, right. What happened to her? She's over here. Kate. They're gone, Kate. The sect is gone. Are are they? It's a little unclear. This is the stuff from Gurner. I checked it. There's nothing there. I can't go on with these visions. I can't stand it anymore. Finding my full medical file is the only way to stop it. It's got to be here. All right, let's set up shop here and start looking through some uh, some computers. Catherine, come here. Yeah, I guess. Yes? Ted. Don't. Let's go. Oh, wait, did Catherine find out the un the disturbing truth? She doesn't want Ted to know. It would be too much. What is... Zero E-C-K?
Yes. Oh, that that funding, that budget, those budget cuts still get you. We created a living cyborg, but you know the funding was cut. I guess you're gonna have to pull the plug on this project. Brother is gone. This thing could change you. I'm sure I have to help him. He'll always be my brother. It's the deck, Ted. He's my brother. You can't save him. <laughs> Look on her face. She even doesn't believe that. <laughs> I'll be okay. I have something to come back for now. You have to understand. is alive and I didn't know my own brother I have to go I like how that file just said that Mark Mark's body was just turned over to the company to experiment on yeah I mean sure why not Got this spare kid body. Kid corpse. Do you, do you need it? Yeah. We're probably going to turn that into don't come back. some sort of AI cyborg thing. It's probably all right. Okay, no, we're, we're still doing this. I mean, honestly, I don't really feel like we need to do this an anymore at this point. It'd be fine to just roll right into the final confrontation with Brother. Hold on. Um... What else we got here? I mean, we could use the we, we you know use the onslaught master whenever you have the opportunity to use the onslaught master, just because it's called that. So, as far as I can tell, they were just normal kids who were in a car accident, and the parents died, so... let's... So one of the brothers... Ted survived. Mark didn't. And the solution was, let's try experimental brain surgery on both of them. And apparently it worked very well, but... The funding was cut! I'm sorry! This is a, a monumental breakthrough. We were able to save this child's life with our experimental nanobot surgery. Sorry, budget cuts.
Aww. But what about this one child that we literally resurrected from the dead? Look, he was dead. He's alive now. You can talk to him. Nope, sorry. Sorry. Finances. I know it, people have mentioned it before, but I do feel like the plot of this has become more and more Neil Breenish as we've gone on. Oh, I like how the holes disappeared from the walls. Like, it's just increasingly more and more. Apparently, the experimental resurrected cyborg child was buried in a, in a in the active subway. But I think, I guess, one main question that we have about, about this is, did David Cage have input on the story, or did he just take ideas from this for his own games? There's one or the other there. It's not out of the question that he was working on the music, not out of the question that he might have some input on story. But if he didn't, he absolutely took some ideas from this. Curious? No dudes? I mean, I'm happy about there not being dudes. Can't go that way. Do I need an item to go that way? Oh, what's that? A little lantern, sure. Now I can go this way.
Oh, have you found it? <laughs> is that him? Why is he wearing a robe? Do you feel him yet, Ted? I think I do. Who are you? That's a question you ought to be asking yourself by now, Ted. Where is he? Do you know? No. Only you can find him. And it is not enough to wander through these tunnels. The deck is no ordinary being. Not anymore. How do I find him? Drift. Flow. Or you will end up here. Like me. Okay, game. You can't introduce a new character now. that recurring dream about the endless field of pipes. Love that one. Uh, okay, we have to drift. We have to flow. We have two ways we can go. Let's try left. Not seeing anything here. Let's go back. Ted's not looking too good, though. Seems like he's had he's had better days. We must follow the flashbacks. Oh, hey, it's our brain surgery room. We made it. Looking out at the endless ocean. Those are just bad dreams, Ted. Got to keep going. Got to keep drifting and flowing. You know, I do. I know that the budget was cut on that project, but I do like the idea that after the experimental brain surgery, no one, I don't know, checked up with Ted over the years. No one from the project to follow up on that. Any um, flashbacks or hallucinations, Ted? Any exhibiting uh, psychic powers, Ted? Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> is that what he looks like now? <laughs> I mean, they did say most of his body is uh, metal. Not good. Terrible internal hemorrhaging on this one. Yeah, just <laughs> turn him completely into a robot. It was the only way. Uh, are we going to ask our brother why did he make a, a religion? Because, I mean, I think that's the relevant question here. Why did he make this violent religion? Where people have to be sacrificed to him? Are we going to get to ask him that? Gotta keep drifting. Gotta keep flowing. We cannot be stopped. Not by these psychic visions. Oh, well, this looks a bit more high tech. Only one way to go. Like just a foot. He has one foot. <laughs> that was the only human part that survived. <laughs> oh, a hand. There's also a hand. Why are we backing up, Ted? This is where we... This is who we were looking for. Mark? Yeah, the buttons... Catch up here, Ted. We found your brother. Why are you doing this? Forget the sec, Mark. I'll get you out of here. I don't think we are, Ted. I don't think that's a promise you can keep. Surgeons didn't know, Mark. They thought... I know. But just forget it. All deserve to live. Oh, Ted must become the new leader of the sect. Only he can do it. Can't. 
damn it, Mark. You killed Lars. That's right. We can't forget that. You killed Kodo, Morgan, Isil, children. They all died by your hand. Metaphorically speaking. I'm talking about the accident. It isn't an excuse. What's left of it isn't our dreams. Not in our flesh, Mark. Our flesh and blood. No, don't! Uh, what? Am I, uh... This is... Okay, we're, are we fighting? This is our... We're fighting brother. Dearest brother. Dearest hand and foot. Or will we change the psychic powers, which seems like probably what we need to. Use. I don't know if it, I don't know if the weapon matters. Yeah, he's a, here he is. Dearest bro has finally sat up. So I, I guess we got our explanation as... Well, sort of? He just thinks humanity is rotten. Uh, wants to bring about the new age. I guess we're not getting anything more than that. This world is imperfect. If only he could wash away the imperfections and make it as beautiful as him. We all know that. We all know that motivation. We've seen it before. I was hoping we'd get a bit more. Ted puts down his gun. He won't need it anymore. The fighting is over. They stopped fighting. Yeah. I don't really think that Mark wanted to see the third millennium. Come on. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, it's all for the best. We mercy killed Mark. He really wanted us to do it. Hardline! That's right. Now, David Gregg, what a what a performance.
What a cinematic tour de force. Available for your DOS PC. <clears throat> wow. All right. So it turned out it was a plot about two normal children getting into a car accident. Their parents were killed. They were given over to a company who performed experiments on them. Ted had experimental brain surgery did, which saved his life and would eventually give him psychic powers because of the nano machines in his brain. <clears throat> and Mark, who was dead, was turned into a robot, but still had like a human foot and hand for some reason. I don't even know why you bother saving it at that point, <laughs> but he had that and also for some reason had psychic power. I'm a bit unclear as to why this process gives you psychic powers, but you just, let's just assume, you know, that's just how it works. It gives you, this experimental procedure gives you the psychic powers. Um, then the funding was cut from the project, so Mark was buried underneath a subway. Did the music just stop? Okay, no, it's still going. Just very abrupt. Right, so Mark was buried under a subway. Sorry, Mark. We were out of money. And then I guess no one ever actually checked up with Ted because we're out of money. You know, we never actually spoke with anyone from that project. Like, Ted never actually got to talk to anyone who was part of it. Which you'd think would have come up at some point, but it did not. <clears throat> um... So, I mean, maybe if the budget wasn't cut, maybe things would have been different, but it was. And so, Mark then, in his subterranean tomb... Hey, who is that Obi-Wan guy, by the way? That guy with the hood? He's like, you need to drift and flow? Who was that? What was that, was that about? I was saying they shouldn't introduce a new character now, but he didn't actually come back. I guess it's not important. The game doesn't seem to think it's important. I guess I shouldn't think it is either. So, um, uh, Mark from his subterranean tomb becomes bitter about his lot in life because he's still... They didn't turn him off. He's still, like, active, just, like, underground and immobile because he is a machine. He becomes bitter and starts reaching out with his psychic powers to turn people into his followers, which become this religion, the sect, that begin destroying society because Mark wants to burn it all down and start it over to begin the new age, to burn out the rotten... Oh, okay. The game just ended. Just went back... It crashed and went back to prompt. That's in a very appropriate way for a hard line to end. Um... <laughs> I like it when the game crashes and it doesn't actually change back to the video mode that the DOS command prompt actually runs in, but stays in the resolution of the game. So it looks weird like that. Anyway, um, yay. Illegal command, yay. So, okay. <sighs> yeah, he was burning down society to begin the new age, to cut out, to burn out the rotten core of humanity. So then Ted, who, you know, his Ted's job is a bit unclear. He's just like a freelance rescue man. He owns a helicopter and like people call him to come rescue them. And he works on his own. He's like not part of the military or anything. He's just freelance. So that's what he does. And he lives out of his helicopter. And then at the beginning of the game, he gets called on a rescue mission. But uh, the woman who calls him dies before he arrives. Then the sect blows up his helicopter. You know, he never got a new helicopter at the end. You'd think he would have gotten a new one to live in at the end. <laughs> they blew up the helicopter, and then that puts Ted on a roller coaster of adventure, meeting up with the rebels and meeting Catherine, and... Um, and then find... Who, who was ISIL? 
Isil was the, supposed to be the leader of the sect, but when we fought him, Isil kept saying that his body was fake, that he lives inside Ted. What was that all about? I don't know. I don't know what that was about. But um, it takes Ted on a path to fight the sect and learn about who he actually is and where he came from. And he had sex with Catherine for no apparent reason. Like, it, it didn't seem... she didn't. It didn't seem like she was very warm towards him prior to that. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Because this is, a, this is our big serious action movie in the 90s. So there does have to be a sex scene. It is... Ob, it's an obligation. They all have to have that. Um, then... We eventually learn that the deck, the mechanical god that the sect worshipped, is actually Mark. And we have to go confront our brother and have a psychic battle and then it's over and everyone died except ted and kate and they went off to live happily ever after presumably ted still has his psychic powers i i assume maybe he won't have the visions anymore but i guess he would still have the powers though you know, I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get the option to join Mark when he says, Mark, you need to team up with me. You need to become the leader of the sect. Isil was too weak. It needs to be you. But we didn't actually have to, we didn't have the option to say yes, because I absolutely would have said yes. That's the ending we would have gotten. But we didn't have that choice. And that's the story. It ended up being a much more fun story than I thought it was thought it would be i thought it would probably be a bit more straightforward and it was not it absolutely was not um i'm a bit torn when it comes to hardline i enjoyed the cutscenes. i enjoyed the terrible acting especially on the part of ted like he was the worst actor in this thing he's the main character and he is noticeably worse than everyone else like in that scene where Lars dies and they're like talking to each other, it's very noticeable how much worse the actor of Ted is in that scene. Um, I enjoyed the FMV. I enjoyed the scenes. I enjoyed the story. I liked the idea of an FMV rail shooter in the style of an arcade light gun game, but the difficulty was out of control. I kind of get the idea why it was. Because in an arcade... A light gun game is going to be pretty hard because, you know, you can just buy more continues with quarters. You bring enough quarters to you to the machine and you can just pay your way through the game. If you're making a game for the home console where the home PC in this case, it's different because you have to figure out what kind of difficulty you're going for when the person is not buying continues. But this is a DOS game. And a common practice for DOS games was that you, in a DOS game, you're supposed to be able to save anywhere at any time. That was very common. Like going back to old adventure games, like say the first King's Quest, you could save anywhere, you know? And that was just kind of a standard thing with DOS games. You were just supposed to be able to do that. And so you can do that in Hardline, but that presents a problem... What kind of difficulty should the game have if the player can just save their game anywhere, anytime? What do you do in terms of difficulty? And apparently, the answer that the developers came up with was make the game ridiculously hard. If the player can just keep saving at any time with no penalty, then for the game to actually last a while... Just make the, make the challenge, make the difficulty ridiculous. I suppose that's probably why it is the way it is. So I am torn about Hardline. I enjoyed quite a few things about it, but that difficulty's out of control. So I did have to turn on the cheat codes. And I'm glad I did because we got to see, we got to see the outcome of this wonderful story. Um, you know, I just felt like playing some FMV, some old 90s FMV. This seemed like it could be pretty good. And it was, you know, when I downloaded this, I didn't even realize David Cage did the music. I didn't realize that until the first time I looked at the opening credits. And, uh, that was a fun surprise to discover. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's been Hardline. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. And uh, 
I don't know if there's anything else really to say about it. Um, other than David Cage's soundtrack was quite un unremarkable. I don't really remember any music from this, to be honest. To be honest. But I do. Re I will remember Ted Irvin, the only man who could defeat the sect, and the tale, the tragic tale of his brother, uh, poor robot boy. He only has his hand and his foot, and he's buried beneath the subway. <laughs> Uh, that's been Hardline. I hope you've enjoyed it. I uh, Nothing else to say about it, I guess. Oh, actually, I guess there is one thing to say. I noticed, I don't have an image of the box art, but I noticed that the box art for this game does have a tagline. The tagline was, it's the thought that kills. Which I guess is like, when they, you know the saying, it's the thought that counts? This was, it's the thought that kills. And I didn't understand what that meant when I first saw it. But now I do, because it's about psychic powers. It's about psychic powers. Hardline, it's the thought that kills.